Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to another episode of Hands on SAP Dev with me, DJ Q Macro. Welcome to the early birds, Louis 1, Louis 2, I'm going to call you that, I've just decided. Uh, and welcome to Javier again, welcome back, and welcome to Visas, Visas, <coughs> Visas in Thailand. Uh, yeah, so um, it's great to be back. And Raul, hi there, and welcome, welcome aboard. Um, we're in the second episode now already uh, of this Back to Basics series on CAP. I'm looking forward to this very much. Kiara, hi, good morning and welcome. AP, good morning from or to Dusseldorf and Madhav, Ashok, uh, <coughs> welcome one and all. Now, I've got a very interesting uh, experiment I've got now. I'm, I'm, I noticed when I played back this session with us, um, oh wow, it's really raining suddenly hard. Uh, when I played back this session last time, um, from last Friday, I noticed that, you know, the camera's here, hello, um, and I'm looking down, hey, AJ, hey. So one of my friends and colleagues from the Developer Advocates team, AJ, is here, good morning, Joe Blower, Joe Blower, welcome. Nice, oh, old friend Joe is back here, Santiago. Alok, how are you all doing, Aman? Hello, hello, hello. Fantastic, I've got my coffee, got my hands on SV <coughs> dev uh, mug here, as usual, for those uh, old timers here. Um, yeah, so I was saying, I kept looking down at my uh, little Chromebook um, tablet here for the chat, and um you know the camera's up here so i've now mounted my phone i don't know whether it's going to go to sleep but i've got it looking at the chat of the on you on the youtube app so hopefully i don't know maybe it'll go to sleep maybe it won't i don't know um but if it goes to sleep i'll stop looking up here i can look down here instead good morning fedex fedex that's an interesting uh uh name rohan good good morning rohan and welcome to you in melbourne abhijit Good morning to you. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whatever. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, my brain's not working. Bangalore, Luis and Stefano. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. So, we, uh, see, I'm just going to switch already uh, to the, well, no, I won't switch yet, but I'll sw switch to the Capire uh, documentation in a minute. Very, very excited for this series, says Rajat. Uh, so am I. So am I. Actually, thank you for saying that. So, yeah, let's get going. So, where we... Um, where we're going with this series is just to take a really gentle walk through the basics of CAP, uh, specifically Node.js. As you know, ah, Luis, thank you for asking. Are you better? Yes, I'm pretty much, I mean, I didn't say 95%. I went for a little run this morning. I've been running this week, okay. <coughs> I'm, <coughs> I'm not coughing from, uh, to, you know, to, to sort of, uh, you know, uh, emphasize the effects of being ill. Like I said, I think last week as well, when I started speaking to you, that's the first words that have come out of my mouth. And I've been up since, you know, I don't know, for the last three hours. Um, and I've not said anything. So as soon as I start speaking, I, I sort of cough a little bit. Jitin and Helmut and Cognet, everybody welcome in. Good morning. Good morning to uh, Braunschweig in Germany, to Helmut. There we go. Lovely. Uh, it's fantastic to see you all here. So, yeah. So the idea of this is we're going to go slowly gently look at things and i'm going to be relying on you you lot in the chat to say hey dj stop there what is that what does that mean what does that do shall we try this okay we're not going to try anything sort of spectacularly complex or anything because we want this to be um you know a, a series for everyone um and the way i learn and maybe the way you learn as well is that you know we don't we try not to skip over things. We try not to skim the surface. And, you know, I quite like staring at things. Now, there's a great uh, a great developer that I talk about uh, a lot whose name has completely got on my head. Um, uh, the, the, uh, the, guy, the, the guy from the Netherlands who wears these sort of tie-dye T-shirts. Ah, I can't remember. He's a brilliant uh, language technician. Uh, he, he did a brilliant series on uh, functional programming with F sharp and link L I N Q. Uh, his name will come to me shortly. Um, Eric Meyer, Eric Meyer, uh, M E I J E R. 
And uh, he says, basically, you know, if you stare at something long enough, you start to understand it. And I think that's what this series is partly about, where we all together just look at things and stare at them and just, what does that mean? Do we understand that? Yes, okay, now we can move on. Aman, say, Aman says, hey DJ, could you touch upon if we can use Baz on BTP for this series? Oh yes, thank you Amar for asking that question. Now, let me switch to the main scene. Um, and I, I think I might have mentioned it super briefly last Friday, but what I did was uh, on the weekend, uh, write a, a blog post developing in cap containers three ways. So to answer your question specifically, uh, Aman, yes, you can. Uh, so if you, in fact, let me share this. I've got, I've got the chat here so I can actually uh, paste that in there. But let me go back and just explain uh, what's in here. A bit of a background as to why I think uh, containers in general and development containers in particular are an amazing tool for us developers. Um, and I, then I start to talk about developing with CAP, Node.js in a container and talk about dev container definitions. And then after the dev container definition, which is basically what we're basing our exploration on. This is where we're going to start. This is where we were last time. CAP B2B main, that was our directory. We opened up VS Code to have a look at that directory. Inside there is this .dev container directory, a well-known name that VS Code will recognize. It's also part of the dev containers initiative, uh, the open uh, standard. It's got a Docker file and, dev, and a dev container. And this part of the documentation, this part of the blog post explains that. And then it says you can do it with VS Code. There's loads of different ways, but I pick three with VS Code and Docker desktop locally, or you can also, uh, come on, oh, DJ, I wrote a lot here, oh dear. Um, also use GitHub code spaces, but you can also use the SAP Business Application Studio. So that's all in there. So check that out. Now, while I'm pasting the links, uh, let me also put the link to the uh, latest SAP developer news. And in there, in fact, in there, our lovely friend, uh, Riley, Riley Rainey, um, he has got uh, a new blog post about the developer insights survey. So get out there. Well, not right now. Oh, look at that. That's interesting. Uh, is that too long to paste? Oh, thank you. Uh, marketing... Um, uh, extra bits there. Oh dear, let's get rid of all that nonsense here. Uh, so we can actually paste it. There we go. Too big to paste because of the tracking. There we go. How ironic is that? There we go. Good night in to Le uh, Leacat. Good night in Leacat and welcome. Okay, so once uh, this is finished today, later on, on the weekend, check out that survey and fill it in. It'd be amazing. Okay, so uh, I hope that answers your question, Aman. Let's get going. Um, we've got, um, okay, great, very useful. Thank you, Louis. Uh, we've got here, let me get rid of that. Uh, there is the repo with that stuff in, just in case you missed it last week. Buenos dias, Antonio, and welcome. Welcome in, Antonio. So everybody say hi to Antonio in the chat. Um, the more chat, the better. The more we learn from each other and with each other, right? So, um, where do we where do we leave off? Well, in fact, we left. Let me let me let me close VS Code, right? Let me let me let me um, uh, let me let me actually uh, yeah close this so we can start sort of from scratch. Close remote connection, right? So starting from scratch, open up VS Code, and we got some. Uh, oh, Alok, uh, good good morning to Alok. Uh, Alok says I see you more emphasis on Node.js, although Java is faster than Node.js. That's a bit of a, a bold claim, don't you think? Alok, Java is faster than Node.js. Don't you think it may be something to do with the fact that, uh, uh, you know, uh, or the fact there's a factor which <coughs> which is efficient programming? Um, speed is one thing, but I don't think speed is always the most important. Um, you know, uh, machines are fast, humans are slower. And uh, so anyway, let's not get into that debate. This is about Node.js. Um, oh, okay, well, you want me to comment on it? Okay, um, I'm not a I'm not a big Java programmer to be honest. This is this is partly why I'm I'm doing Node.js because I love JavaScript. JavaScript is an incredibly interesting language, um, and um, I'm not really a big big on Java. However, I have been talking to folks internally. There are some awesome 
Java people, of course, in the CAP team at SAP. So maybe later this year, I'm going to be able to try and get hold of one or more of those lovely people and get them on the live stream and get them to talk about the sort of the Java angle on uh, CAP. Let me know in the chat, not just you, Alok, but uh, everybody else as well. Let me know if that would be uh, something you're interested in. Uh, uh, from I uh, in David in Turkey. Ah, excellent, excellent. Okay, so yeah, uh, I hope that's uh, comment enough there, Alok. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be JavaScript. Hola. Um, okay, so I've opened VS Code, and now what I'm going to do is open, open, oop, open folder. There we go. Dev containers. Open folder in container. In fact, if we just open folder, right? Folder, directory, same thing. It just really annoys me that they call it folder these days. So I'm going to go here. This is where we started last time. And you can see inside as well, um, you've got that dev, those dev container definitions. So again, we're going to open that. This is the last time I'll go through this. You know, we're not going to th go through this next week. Um, and it's going to say, is it not going to say what's going on here? Dev container. Oh, oh I've opened the wrong thing. Sorry. Wait a minute. File, file close, close, close folder. File, there we go, file open folder. I open, I open specifically the dev container folder, but I'm supposed to be opening the, the folder that contains the dev contains folder. In which case then VS Code will say, oh, got a dev container definition. Do you want me to reopen this folder in the container? And you say yes, right? So anyway, this is, this is where we left off last time. So in here, I've got a terminal and the user node inside the Linux container. And we've got all the tools we need. We've got curl, we've got git, we've got, even got jq. And most importantly, we've got CDS, okay? Right, that's where we left off last time. In fact, what we did last time is we were looking at the help, weren't we? Let's get rid of that and rid of that. And we went into the get started and we'd been through the jump start development. We've got all these tools here. We've got these all installed. So we're sort of ready to jump start a project. Now we said, so Helmut says, I've been a Java developer and love JavaScript, Node.js, TypeScript much more. Thank you, Helmut. Yes, I mean, you know, I don't want to turn this into a language. There's no point in having a language war. We each have our own preferences and everything. Uh, lots of people I know love Java. Uh, lots of people I know love JavaScript, TypeScript, um, and so on. I do, actually, one of the really interesting things is that while I'm not a big fan of Java, the language, I'm a huge fan of uh, Java, the development arena because of the JVM. One of the languages I do like to dabble in, uh, I used to program in it a little bit more than I do these days, is a language, it's a closure language, C-L-O-J-U-R-E, um, closure. It's a Lisp, okay, closure. is a predominantly functional programming language and a dialect of the Lisp programming language. Um, so closure basically compiles to JVM bytecode. And there are other languages as well, which are wonderful and compile to JVM uh, bytecode. For example, Scala, right? So, um, and, and also you know, these languages can sort of share libraries with each other, right? So, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, the Java ecosystem at all. It's just that I, I'm not a big fan of the Java language itself. Anyway, that's just me, personal DJ. So Likiat says, we build extension factory Kima Java apps with Olingo. Ooh, I'm not heard about or not heard about I've not heard about Olingo for such a long time um, I'll come back to that in a second uh, OData connecting C4 and S4 also have no JS schema functions for use excellent the cat that's good stuff so we're going to be relying on you and many of the other folks in the uh, chat uh, for help for, with everything Bibu hello DJ uh, hello Bibu in Germany I too hate Java I didn't say I hate Java uh, I didn't say I hate Java at all you know hate's a very strong word um, I just you know I'm not that keen on it, basically. Anyway, anyway, uh, I've already started digressing. Come on, DJ, get with the program. What we said um, was we can clone a starter repo. There's some amazing examples on GitHub. We have an SAP samples uh, organization on GitHub. And in there, we've got, for example, CloudCap samples as a repo. But we're not going to go there, actually what we did last week, and we're gonna do this again and take our time, um, is we're gonna play around with the command line tool CDS. CDS init, we're gonna look at CDS init, we're gonna look at CDS add, and then we're gonna look at CDS watch. Okay, just to start us, you know, having a good feel for 
sort of what's going on. Uh, by the way, this, this phone thing is working. Uh, I need, maybe need to make the font a little bit bigger because my eye, you know, it's right over there. Uh, but, you know, it's quite good. So maybe you can, you know, I, you, I feel as I'm interacting with you a little bit better because I'm looking up here and then the phone's over here. So Visa says, I am one who prefers, uh, oh, in fact, there's a heart thing that's in the way of the text, prefers the C family languages instead of Java. Oh, interesting. Yes. Categorization. Anyway, fantastic. All chat welcome. Let me know what you think uh, about anything technical. No, not just anything, anything. So CDS Init Bookshop and then Code Bookshop and then CDS Watch. Let's think about what those are. So let's go back into here. And what we did, CDS Init Bookshop. Remember what we did. In fact, CDS Init dash dash help. We saw this information here. Initialize a new project in a folder that we specify here with the current working directory as default. So if you don't specify uh, a folder name, you know, a project name, it's going to create it in the, in the current folder. Okay, so we, let's just um, have a, oh my, my water pump's going on, what's going on? Let's just say uh, for the time being, we're going to have this little throwaway little cat project. So we'll, we'll specify a directory, a, pro, a folder called bookshop. What we can do when we initialize a project, we can add features directly, but we're not going to do that yet. We're going to look at CDS add shortly. Okay. So there's some examples. So what we'll do is we'll say CDS in its bookshop. Now, what happens is that we get, there's our dev container that we've already had. We get this new directory called bookshop. Let's go into bookshop now. And in fact, let's look at all of them. Oh, I can hear myself. Ah, I knew I could hear something. I can hear myself on the YouTube video here. Let me just turn this down to there. Ah, it's like I can hear myself somehow. Uh, there we go. That's it. Three minus eight. Okay. Uh, rather, you know, I suppose you could look. That's, come on, DJ, use VS Code properly. Let's look here. Right. So let's work through what this does for us. It creates a directory and it creates a ton of files in there. So let's make sure we know what each of these files and each of these directories are. We're not going to dig into them too much yet, but let's leave no stone unturned. So first of all, can anybody tell, we'll come back to this, but can anybody tell me, for example, what the .eslintrc is all about? what the dot git ignore is about, put it in the chat. We'll come to those shortly. Okay. And because uh, those are sort of not cap specific, nor is package.json for that matter. Okay. So remember, this is a Node.js flavor of cap. So, hey, good morning, Christian. This is Node.js flavor of cap. Um, but we, of course, we're using, you know, we're sort of not reinventing everything with with cap you know it uses a lot of amazing tools and and technologies and techniques so, okay so tell me in the chat what you think uh eslintrc and dot git ignore are all about we'll come to those shortly so christian says a little bit more input for the language war the language war who said about anything about the language war language discussion i think an empirical comparison of c c plus plus java Perl, love Perl, uh python rex Oh, I used to programming Rex a lot on the IBM mainframe uh, and TCL for a search string processing program. Uh, where's that quote from? Oh, ah, Christian, did you put a, a URL in that little bit of um, uh, chat there? Because Antonio, remind me later when we chat later, Antonio, let's figure out how we can allow people to post URLs in the live chat. I think I think if I'm right. Uh, Christian, you tried to post a URL to an article that had that quote in it, I'm guessing, right? So Stefano says, git ignore stores all the files that will not go to the git repo. Exactly right. We'll come to that in a second. Uh, Luis, at the moment, you are creating all of this app components in the BAS space in local BTP or BAS instance. Well, actually, Luis, I'm, I'm creating it on my local file system um, on this Mac OS device, but from the, from the confines, from the context of a container. So check out that blog post that I posted a link to um, earlier, and that will explain things. In fact, if I go back to that blog post for a second, um, there's a diagram that, that might help. There's a diagram, you know, who doesn't like an ASCII art diagram here? Uh, where is it? Where is it? There we go. There's a diagram. Oh, Antonio, thank you for answering as well. Yep. Okay. Um, so this is my MacBook, which is there. 
the host is a Mac OS device. In there, I've got uh, my user ID in the users directory. You know, this, this is Darwin Mac OS. This is sort of a BSD based distribution, but it's, a, you know, so it's sort of Linux or Unix like. So rather than sort of slash home, it's slash users. There's my ID, there's work in there, scratch. That's what you can see there, home. Well, user, that's another container. Let's, no, let's not ignore that. That's too complicated. Uh, then inside there, in a scratch directory, I've got cat b2b main. But now I'm actually inside a container where this cat b2b main directory is bind mounted into it. And that's all described in this blog post here. So I'm actually in, while I'm in VS Code here, I'm in a container. That's why the user ID is node, not i347, whatever it is, right? Fantastic. So um, Visa's also set, oh, and... Uh, Oh, it's quite not. Ah, okay. Let me just see here. It's all scrolling up too fast. It's brilliant. So uh, Luis says, oh, oh no. Okay, uh, Luis, uh, Git ignore is for ignoring files to back up to Git in GitHub. Perfect. Um, Christian Drum, it's quite a, a quite old paper. It's a quite old paper, maybe you thought to say. Uh, Raul says, Git ignore ignores apps uh, that do not need to be uploaded to GitHub. Um, interesting. Let's make sure we understand the difference between Git and GitHub. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, they can, but so you can think of those as one of the same thing, but they're not. They're completely different things. Git is the protocol and the distributed version control system mechanism. GitHub is a um, an online social coding website that supports Git-based repositories, right? Remember, Git... Uh, is a distributed version control system, which means that you can have a you know a copy of your repository locally and then a remote copy on GitHub, for example, or GitLab or SourceHub or something like that. All these different things, SourceHub, GitLab, they're all, and, and I'm sure there's other things, Atlassian's uh, got, has got one as well. I can't think what it is. Um, but the, those are all sort of places you can store remotely a clone or a copy of your repo. So uh, the phone's working well, but it's scrolling past too fast. It's brilliant. There's so much chat. I'm going to look down here. Um, so let's make sure we know the difference there. Git ignore, ignores apps, said Raul, and Visa as well. Git ignore is used for managing the files that we want Git to track or untrack them. Yeah, we want to, uh, the, the doc, basically the dot git ignore. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at that. Dot git ignore has got all the stuff that shouldn't be tracked by Git. When we start to, to manage our, our source code in our source code control system, which is Git, it'll, by default, track everything, okay? Store and save everything and run you can, you know, you're in, into the repository locally and then you can push that repository to a remote destination, for example, GitHub. But if you've got secrets, database user IDs, passwords, um, you know, SSH keys or whatever, right? You don't want those going into repository that's on a remote server, certainly not a remote server that, you know, is exposing that repository publicly. Also, you've got a ton of stuff which is just generated. You know, it's just, uh, it's just a lot of stuff. For example, the node modules directory. You know, the node modules directory contains all of the node modules and node packages that you install and all the ones that they require, all their dependencies, their dependencies, 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 dependencies. So it's a huge set of uh, modules that you don't really need to track because they can be rebuilt, regenerated, you know, uh, reinstalled. So you, you know, to save time, to save space, you don't want to track those either. And the way you specify, I don't want to track this, I don't want to track that, I don't want this in my repo, is you put the the, the, the references to those in the git ignore file. Okay, perfect, 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 perfect. So, um, so Antonio, thank you for answering. Uh, Alloc is also uh, spot on there. FedEx, yes, LintRC. Okay, so let's talk about yes, LintRC. Uh, by the way, um, Bitbucket. Ah, that was the that was the one from Atlassian, isn't it, Antonio? Bitbucket. So, uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, where are we? Oh yeah. So FedEx. Uh, sorry, FedEx. I forgot your name again. Is it? Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, so I'll just say Felix. Um, ESNTLC is to capture show compile time errors in JavaScript to avoid runtime errors. Now, exactly. So ESLint is a very well established and very capable linting tool. So when you lint your code, basically you run a program over it and it looks uh, at your code and has a, a rule set 
that it applies to that code to say, well, is is that the right? And and the, and the rule set, you can you can have rules that say, well, you know, don't capitalize this, or if you're going to have, um, for example, an if then else statement, then it's going to look like this, or it's it's got to have an else or whatever. All sorts of different rules that you can implement for your code, and there are clearly global rules that make sense for everyone, regardless of what project they're on, for example. And there are language specific rules that you might want. And there might be project specific rules. You know, you in your organization might have rules that, you, you know, house rules, let's say, do you also want uh, your developers to comply with? And with ESLint, you can run the linting over the code base Point ESLint to standard rules, global rules, organization specific rules, project specific rules, and it will spit out information. I said, well, you shouldn't really be doing this and you've done this and this is definitely wrong. You need to fix this. Some rules will point out issues that are automatically fixable. Other rules will point out uh, issues that you have to fix, okay? And there are different sort of levels of you know, information, warning, error, etc. Brilliant. This is an, I mean, let me know. I mean, we've not even started talking about CAP yet, but this is super important. If you're going to understand what everything is in this directory and also, why don't we have actually have a look at the, the linting mechanism in CDS? Because let's jump to that now. Uh, this, is a, this is a really nice um, segue. What's the word segue? Uh, CDS, CDS lint. There we go, look at that, CDS lint rules. So to catch issues with CDS models. We've not even started talking about CDS models yet, but once we start defining our database schema, our entities and the relationships between them and the properties therein, and once we start defining services, for example, all in CDS, in this declarative language, beautiful declarative language, we also may want to, um, I can't think of a better word than to police that, uh, to check that a set of definitions according to some house rules. And CDS, CAP, with the CDS command, provides a way to do that using ESLint with an ESLint plugin specifically, oh, that's ESLint, specifically for CAP, specifically for CDS. Okay, in fact, why don't we do this shortly? What time is it now? Already 8.27, oh my goodness me, 8.27. We'll do that and we'll do that as an example of we want to add the CDS Lint capabilities to our project and we'll do that with CDS Add. Amazing, okay. So, um, ba, 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 ba. So, so thank you, FedEx, for bringing it up. By the way, does anybody know? Have a look at this, have a look at this. Um, we have two files in here. Oh, oh, Hussein, good night in Hussein. Uh, why don't we see a pretty RC? That's not standard. We could add a prettier RC. So Hussein, um, rather than me go on, uh, yeah, well, we can do it if you want, another digression. Put in the chat, Hussein, very briefly, what prettier RC is all about. And that also reminds me to point out with Hussein's example of a dot prettier RC, dot CDS RC, dot ESLint RC, why, why do all these files end in RC? Yeah. Also, why do they all start with a dot? And can somebody put in the chat what they think about those two aspects of those file names ending in RC? All right, dot JSON is the extension to say it's JSON, etc., etc. Fine. Uh, don't get me started on JSON. That's not really JSON because it's comments JSON with comments, and it's still dot JSON. And then your JQ blows up when it tries to display it for you. Ah. Oh, anyway. Um, here we go. Here's, here's an example of JSON with comments. Look at that. Uh, extensions. Look at that. That's not JSON. It shouldn't have a JSON extension. DJ, calm down. Calm down, DJ. I think it should be .json C, I think. Anyway. Anyway, anyway, any. VS Code is good enough to realize that it's not JSON. It's JSON with comments and formats it prime nicely. Let me know. Anyway, so um, where are we? Uh, ooh, uh, the app components are stored in the BTP BAS instance. The dev container will only provide the runtime environment of the code, but the data is stored outside the container. Exactly, Javier, exactly. Um, of course, you can store the code in a container, but containers by definition and philosophically, you should always think of them as ephemeral, as in, you know, they could be here today, gone tomorrow, or here this minute, gone the next minute, and recreated in this sort of microservice 
think of, think of Cloud Foundry, think of Kubernetes, think of auto scaling, auto reducing. Containers should be or are ephemeral and you should never store important data that needs to be persisted inside a container. That's what mount, mounted, bind mounted directories are for. That's what volumes are for. Volume is another component concept in you know the container land like Docker and, and so on. Um, so yeah, shouldn't store data inside a Docker container. You should, you know, once you delete the container, it should not matter to you. Okay. Uh, so ba -ba -da -ba -da, ESLint of JavaScript, lint like syntax highlighting the format and managed by the ESLint extension. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So there are many services that support Git, like GitLab and Bitbucket. Javier, good morning. Learning stuff before the first meeting. That should be a. Fr I should get another mug. Learning stuff before your first meeting. There we go. Excellent, Javier. Thank you very much for that phrase. Um, uh, Raul, uh, good on you, mate. I've never seen the section in SAP Paths. What section? I missed that. Ah. Uh, are you talking about yes, Lynn? Brilliant. Okay. So, I was saying, yeah, don't forget to put in the chat what. Um, am I still online, by the way? Uh, yeah, I'm still online. Oh, very good. Um, uh, don't forget to put in the chat what Pretty RC is. So, I'll come back to the dot RC, the, the, the dot files and RC. So ESLint, that's what it looks like. These are sort of basic rules. Okay, so when when ESLint runs over the code base, okay, it's gonna lint things like the CDS files, it's gonna lint JavaScript files. And rather than ESLint, rather than have ESLint say, oh, by the way, you're using this, this global here, a select statement in JavaScript, as it were, it's actually a, it's a constant before defining it. So this is sort of telling ESLint to sort of ignore, this is my language, to sort of ignore, don't worry about these particular globals in the JavaScript code. Don't complain about them because they're deliberately there, okay? You can also turn different rules on and off. In fact, let's go to, where is it here? Um, recommended rules, here we go. Uh, ESLint extension, recommended rules. Oh, I'll tell you what, tell you what, NPM, let's search for NPM, uh, CDS ESLint. There we go. This is the ESLint plugin. Let me post that in the chat there. That is the ESLint plugin that provides, that provides, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Recommended rules. Uh, the recommended rules. Where's the rule? There we go. Oh, that'll do. Oh, here, CDSLint rules. The CDSLint rules are rules that you can implement and have checked with ESLint, but rules specific to CAP development, specific in this case to CDS. For example, I don't know. Um, uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, no dollar prefix names. Names must not start with dollar to avoid possible shadowing of reserved variables. Let's play with that. Okay. In, oh, here we go. So uh, Kiara says, Something, uh, oh, message retracted. Okay, that's fine. Um, and Hussein, good day to all. Blah, 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 blah. The RC naming convention of RC files was inspired by the Runcon family. Oh my goodness me, Hussein, fantastic history there. Yes, basically it goes back a very long way, back to the early Unix days, run commands, a lot of, a lot of simple Unix commands. You might want to have configuration and it was like the run configuration or the run, run uh, yeah, run configuration type thing. So it's just, a, very old standard. So when you see a, something ending in RC, it's usually a configuration file for a command line tool. And often these files, just so they don't clutter up um, when you do a, an LS, for example, in a directory, here we go. If I, if I say here LS, you know, we just see the uh, one, two, three, four, five. But in fact, if we say, show me all the files, we get more. We got the dot ES, lint RC, dot e. So these are called hidden files, right? So uh, so uh, goes back to Unix Grandpa. It's, oh my goodness, Hussein! What a fantastic uh, contribution there to the chat. Exactly, CTSS. Uh, <coughs> I can't remember what C was, uh, but time sharing system. It was basically the predecessor to Multics, which was a, you know ultimately a failed or an abandoned project to rebuild what CTSS, a time sharing system, was in the fifties and early sixties. But out of out of the ashes of Multics came Unix, right? And as we all know, Linux is basically a Unix with GNU. And you know, the, the, the cloud is just a whole load of Linux machines, Unix machines, fantastic. 
Um, oh, ah, okay, that's what you quote something, quote something. Finally joined, Phil. Welcome and finally joined. Yes, Kiara says, I, I suppose originally uh, RC stood for run command. Perfect. And Visa says, I love dot bash RC. Exactly. Um, so there we go. Okay, so good morning, Sampath, as well. Um, I'm, I'm talking a lot. Let me know if this is, uh, well, yeah, let's just, let's just stare at everything. Okay, let's play with ESLint RC. Why don't we just don't jump in. Oh, no, no, let's go through these things first. So we've got via, dot .vs code, dot .vs code, hidden directory. And this is also created. These files are created by the CDS init process to help us use CAP within VS Code. So it's got some recommendations for extensions that should be installed. Do you anybody recognize those? For example, these extensions are in also our dev container JSON. Look, uh, oh, horrible formatting there. Uh, the VS Code extension for CAP CDS development, ESLint extension, the HTTP client, SQLite viewer, Rainbow CSV. Oh, look, they look familiar. Yeah, there we go. There's another one as well. Night Owl, no idea what that is. Maybe it's some sort of uh, theme. I don't know. Uh, Night Owl, don't know. Unwanted recommendations, fine. We've got launch.json, which is all about launching CAP servers in VS Code. So you can, for example, debug them and tasks, uh, also similar. We don't need to go into what those are now. Uh, let's not confuse ourselves with .vs code, but these are basically helper definition files for a really comfortable uh, experience building and developing with CAP in VS Code, because VS Code, right? Uh, good morning, and hey, Phil Cooley. Oh, everybody knows each other. Oh, fantastic, uh, love tech dev fest here. Good morning, colleagues to you, SVO as well. Now. Another thing that the CDS init command creates is a set of directories. These are well-known directories. For now, we're just gonna briefly talk about what they are and then forget them. In fact, we're gonna delete them in a minute. Think of CAP as a programming model, a framework with which you can build services, as in backend services, OData services and other restful HTTP based services, or even with, you know, if, if you're, uh, if you're that way inclined, you know, you can put a GraphQL adapter on the front as well. Um, that was a, that was a weird thing. Uh, but basically you can build headless services and that is what the DB and the serve directories I think of are for. Okay. So you define effectively your entities, what they are books, authors, whatever, you know, in the bookshop thing, you define the properties in them, you define what keys there are, you define the relationships between those, for example, associations, compositions. And that's what I think of as the persistence layer, right? The DB. And I said last week that it's unfortunate that the, that the, you know, alphabetical order wise, these are not quite the way I think of them because at the bottom is the persistence layer nearest the database. Okay. And then you might want to build one or more services to expose combinations of and you know uh, combinations of these entities and these relationships filtered out for certain um, purposes so you might have you know a mobile client running on you know um, Android and, and what is it iOS uh, you might have a web client you might have an API that you want you know b2b or uh, you know machine to machine different ways of looking at essentially the same data at the same persistence layer so you want to be, have multiple services defined that point to and expose different combinations of the entities, right? And that you traditionally, you, you separate the definition of the services out from the definition of the entities. You separate the persistence layer out from the service layer. So you've got the DB at the bottom, DB directory at the bottom, the server serve service layer sort of in the middle, as it were, and those are that's where you expose these different services, and you can annotate these services as well, and you know apply restrictions and whatever. You can do that at the database layer as well. And then also, if you want, essentially, uh, the core of the CAP server is based upon Express, so you can serve anything. So why not serve some static content that is, for example. Uh, an HTML5 front end provided, for example, by UI5, you know, providing a Fury front end or Vue or React or Angular or whatever you want. And you stick that stuff in the app directory. So it's all beautifully organized. Okay. You don't have to do that, but it makes a lot of sense. And in fact, 
one of the amazing things about the CDS language itself is that it gives us so many opportunities to build reusable and modularized, that's not even a word, modularized definitions of things that you can then share within your project, within your organization. You can bring things in as well from you know other, other parts. So it's a, it's a language that has a lot of facility for doing the right thing in terms of not repeating yourself, doing things succinctly, doing things in a way that doesn't stamp all over things you've imported, for example. It's amazing, okay? So those three directories. Then we have the .cdsrc. I'm gonna come back to that when we start talking about the CDS environment, okay? But basically you can define settings that you want sort of globally within your project, okay? ESLint we've already talked about, Gitignore we've talked about, and maybe not the most important, but the most prominent file in the stuff that's generated, right, is the package JSON. Package JSON, it's not a cap thing, it's a Node.js thing. And the package manager, Node package manager of Node.js, you define your project, your package in package JSON. So you can see here, this is this is the, the default that's, that, that's um, generated. And we have, you know, sort of usual suspects. What's the name of this thing? What's the version? What's the description? If there's a GitHub or a Bitbucket or whatever, you know, remote repo, what's that? Put a license in, blah, 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 blah. So let's talk about the three sort of objects here. There are many more objects, but this is this is purely, this, there are no cap specific items in this package JSON yet, okay? When there are cap specific items, we'll also see another object or a property called CDS, which has got a whole lot of stuff in there, but we don't need to come to that yet. What we're saying here, or what this package JSON is saying is, this project, this thing, this bookshop, depends upon a couple of node packages, node module, package, module, library. You know, I'll probably say these words interchangeably. There we go. It depends upon the at SAP CDS package. At SAP is a, you know, a namespace effectively, a prefix. And it also depends upon, you know, the very, uh, very popular, you know, ubiquitous, one might also, also almost say, uh, fast, unopinionated, minimalist web framework upon which CAP relies, CAP Node.js relies. In the chat, somebody, we talked about this last week briefly, somebody tell me what the difference is between SAP CDS and SAP CDS-DK. Okay, remember that? Put that in the chat. While somebody puts that in the chat, we have dependencies, but we also have dev dependencies. Think about this in terms of the two phases in which you're operating or you're thinking and your app is or your service. Uh, initially, you're developing it, building it, fixing it, redoing it, rerunning it, adding some more features and so on. So design, let's call it design time. Development time just sounds a bit weird. Design time. So during design time, you're gonna need extra tools to help you, linting tools. You know, you don't need the linter in production. In the same way, you don't need, for example, an auto, um, auto checking to see if files have changed, an auto restarting mechanism that will restart your cap server if you make some changes that will restart it automatically. You don't need that in production, right? So these tools, are design time tools um, and uh, to preempt whoever's going to put what in the chat these design time tools like the watcher like the auto restarter which is invoked with CDS watch which we'll hopefully look at before we finish today which looks like last week that uh, those tools are in the CDS DK in the development kit so Cognit81 says CDS DK has the design tools and CDS has the core runtime environment. Beautiful, okay? We want as small a footprint as possible in production. We don't want any cruff. We don't want any extra tools. A, because, you know, it's a waste of network transfer. It's a waste of startup time, but it's also a bigger service area from a security perspective. So we want the minimum possible in our containers that we run on Kubernetes and in Cloud Foundry and whatever. 
there's no point in sending up all the all the design tools you know to production okay so design time and runtime and the diff that's the difference also reflected in dependencies versus dev dependencies so in design time while we're building this stuff out we can and we might want to connect to a remote sap hana cloud uh instance okay with a, an hdi container maybe we'll do that in the future <clears throat> but for super quick development turnaround it makes a lot of sense to have a persistence layer that is a lot quicker a lot more local and that persistence layer by default is sqlite it's a file-based persistence system file-based rdbms okay so while we're developing not while we're running in production you would never really want to run in production with sqlite although some people do for some weird edge case reasons because why not but anyway that's another story you can use sqlite so that's why sqlite is a dev dependency okay so here we go uh so oh mad have i love that phrase cds is fat free where a cdstk my words now is full fat you get all the goodness of all the tools exactly extra features for developers mad have 10 points for you for saying cds is fat free brilliant uh bibu says sap cloud sdk is a set of libraries and tools provided by sap to simplify the development it is now sap cloud sdk is not what you might think it is it's not sap cd sdk sap cloud sdk is a separate separate project separate library in the same sort of space in fact sap cds cap uses the sap cloud sdk to manage and use connections to remote systems services apis and so on okay if anybody's attended the uh we have a service integration with cap code jam that the developer uh, that the developer advocates have and we talk a lot about the sap cloud <coughs> cloud sdk in that <coughs> when you connect to a remote api the sap cloud sdk is used internally by cap to make that connection and manage that connection uh juan is a thumbs up luis could you support us in design time yeah my goodness me um luis check out on the maybe antonio can find it for me please uh on the i think it's on the sap youtube channel there's the developer keynote from november last year one of the items in that keynote is using jewel in the sap uh, business application to do as part of sap build code to generate cds and it was amazing you know i was mind blown and you know there we go and i was there uh so yeah check it out and so the answer is yes uh cds is cool libs we have to be pack them into the output bundle but sdk is the tool for development. perfect you're all we're all on the same page brilliant okay so and then finally you can have scripts script names that then you can call with npm blah 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 script name and it will do whatever's defined it's almost like an alias really almost um what's defined in here run by the npm start command okay um now one of the interesting things where this comes into play is when you deploy such a project to for example cloud foundry automatically npm start will be invoked okay so what do you whatever you define for the start script in your package json is the thing that will start your whole service running okay um so cds serve will come on to cds serve. that's part that's not part of the cdsdk that's part of the C, sap cds that's part of the runtime okay right so thank you antonio for sharing that link perfect okay so where are we ah yes okay so what we'll do in fact let me let me how do i do this now let me put that up there so it's a little bit better turn let's drag the terminal to there there we go a lot of mouse clicky clicky but there we go okay so what we'll do is in eslint rc in fact let's do this cds add dash dash help we've looked at we've looked at cds in it to initialize the project and cds in it will produce all these files for us so let's do a cds add first of all let's have a bit of a help what can it do for us okay 
Uh, let's move it a little bit over there so we don't wrap the lines. Oh, hello. There we go. So CDS add adds one or more features to an existing project. One of the one of the beautiful concepts of CAP. Convention over configuration, grow as you go. So try not to boil the ocean when you're starting out a project. Do the simplest thing that could possibly work. That's one of the phrases that from the uh, from the amazing uh, Ward Cunningham, inventor of the wiki, etc., etc. And uh, uh, anyway, um, so we didn't need anything until now. So now let's have, let's have a CDS add. So we're going to add support for SAP HANA, add support for SQL Lite, add support for App Router. I think we talked about last last week, and Daniel also pointed out, Daniel Schlachter pointed out that yeah, this is if you want to if you want to manage App Router with you know uh, workspace, you do something different. But if you want your standalone App Router, see this add App Router, all sorts of things to do with messaging and so on. But there's one here. We'll tr we'll try a simple one, tiny sample. Why do I think of Elton John when I see tiny sample? Uh, add minimal sample files, and that's going to be really helpful for us. Uh, oh, so Raul says. Uh, DJ, I noticed SAP BAS has different files compared to Visual Studio Code. Is there any adjustment to be made in SAP BAS before deployment? There shouldn't be. What Can you give me an example of what different files there are? When you do a CDS in it, um, you should see all these files, the .vs code directory with, uh, you know, extensions, launch and tasks, app, db and serve directories, CDS RC, JSON, ESLint, all those files you should see when you do a CDS in it in SAP Baz. Um, there's also a, what's it called? A, a helper thing, a wizard. A, is it a wizard? Yeah, I don't know, in, in Baz, which will give you a sort of a graphical way of doing uh, a similar sort of thing, but you should end up with the same thing. Cheers, Antonio. We'll see you in a future live stream. Check out, keep keep looking at SAP devs, everybody, for Antonio's live streams as well. Anyway, let's do a CDS add tiny sample. Now, I'm going to clear screen so we can see it there. Keep your eye on, not that, uh, keep your eye on what's in here, DB and serve. There's nothing in app, nothing in DB, and nothing in serve. If I run that now, adding feature tiny sample, successfully added features to your project. And what we get, we can get rid of that, what we get is stuff in the DB directory and stuff in the serve directory. What we get is a very simple data model. It, ah, okay, interesting. .eslint rc. Ah, could it be that the default display in the Explorer in SAP Baz doesn't show hidden files? Could it be that? Can you see the .git ignore file in the in the list there? I wonder if it's just a display thing. Go into a terminal and say ls space minus a. Go into a terminal, do this ls minus a or ls minus la to you know, long list, and you should see that. If not, let me know. Um, so, oh, uh, so AP is saying no addition to add CDSDK. Ah, okay. So that's a great question. Thank you for asking, AP. We're already we already have CDSDK installed. Uh, if you check out last week's live stream and or check out in the .dev container directory, there we have the dev container file, but we also have the Docker file. Don't forget we're in the Docker container. Uh, not now. Thank you very much. In here, the container that we're in here, you name minus A, who am I? I'm the user node in a Linux container here. That container has been created from the image that's been defined with this Docker file definition, where we've installed a couple of tools, and we've also installed the SAP CDS DK already globally. Okay, so we've already got, so if I say, it's a great question though, Brilliant. It ls, sorry, not, not npm ls dash dash global. Let's see what happens. There we go. What have what I'm saying is in this container, in this context of where I am, npm. What packages are installed globally? Okay. If I if I did a um, npm ls like that, nothing's installed. We haven't done an M npm install yet. That's fine. Just say, I just want to show you nothing's installed, even though uh, the package.json says we need this, we need this, and we need this. We haven't installed those yet. But when we do an L npm ls global, globally, we have the SAP CDSDK, um, and we also have ESLint, and I don't know what PNPM is, no idea. Uh, don't know. But 
probably a dependency of uh, SAP CSDK. What is PM? Anyway, somebody find out what PNPM is. Quite interesting. So, Rael, thanks, mate. I'll check tomorrow. I went to use CDS and NPM. When NPM is all the, is is a node pack is the node package manager. So when we're installing packages which may or may not be CAP specific or CAP related, CDS related packages, use NPM. When you're doing things to um, create and grow and nurture and garden your CAP project and also run a CAP server, which we'll do in a minute, you use a CDS command. So we've done a CDS add, and now we can say um, we can have a look here. We can see the data model. There, where is it? Data model, books, fine, uh, in a namespace. We've even got some data. Okay, Wuthering Heights and Jane Eyre, uh, fine. Guess who was that uh, author there? Uh, ah, Bronte, there we go. And we've also got a very simple service definition file, which exposes, this is what we were saying before, you know, at the, at the um, persistence layer, we have the basic entities. No relations, because there's, you know, there's only one entity here. But then at the service <coughs> layer, one thing higher up, we're bringing in those entity definitions from here and sort of calling them local name my. Then we're defining a service called catalog service. We're going to, we're going to look at this in a lot more detail next week. We're defining a service and exposing that books entity here. We're also going to call it books. And also, we're going to annotate this by saying, oh, this particular entity is read only. Okay. Annotations is a huge area, amazingly powerful area. Okay. So we've done a CDS add and we've had tiny sample. But if we do a CDS add lint, for example, ooh, let's go into the um, package JSON. CDS add lint install dependency. Let's, while that's installing, let's talk about what that's So I've used CDS add again to bring in another tool, another feature to this particular project. I want to have linting facilities that have CAP specific or CDS specific rules here that I might may or may not want to add to later on. Um, so I'm using the CDS add mechanism to install this lint feature which will do lots of different things um oh i should have i should have done a git um in it so we can see the changes but there you can see there's no changes here we're already referring to by default dot, dot ds es lint rc has already got the reference to the what es lint rc should use but now we've got in our package json two more dev dependencies Again, they're dev dependencies because we only need them during development. We've got the SAP's ESLint plugin CDS, which we looked at before on NPM, and we've got ESLint itself. Now, if we if we do this, let's do this. Let's go into the data model. Say well, now we can say CDS lint everything dot this this directory, for example. Let's see what happens. So CDS, we're calling CDS. So again, to answer your question, um, some question, uh, when do we use NPM, when do we use CDS? When we're doing things with, with our CAP project itself, we use a CDS command. And, C and the CDS command here is a bit, a bit, little bit like a wrapper because it's going to call ESLint, okay? Not very exciting output, a blank line, because everything's fine, okay? What it's done is it's caught, in fact, in fact, a little bit into the few, I think we want to look at this later on, but debug equals all CDS lint dot. Let's set the environment variable debug to all magic and CDS lint. Let's see what happens. Oh my goodness me. Oh, it's doing all this, doing all this. Oh, what is going on? Look, it's checking all these rules here. It's checking our CSV file. It's checking our data model CDS file, that one there. And it's checking our cat service file. Now, remember that one that we saw? Ah, here we go. Yes, here we go. Uh, no dollar. Here we go. No dollar prefix names. Let's do that one. So we are not allowed to have basically a, a property, right? That begin the name of which begins with a dollar sign. So let's go and do that because we're rebels. If I say, for example, dollar title. Okay, I'll save that. Let's run that again, and I'll keep the debug on. Oh. So thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Bibu. PNPM, the tidy roommate of package managers. NPM, the one who throws no measures party in every project. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, check that out. Where is tiny sample defined for it to be added when we use CDS add? Great question, Rohan. Great question. It's actually defined in the CDSDK, right? Um, 
one of the amazing things uh, that you might want to know, oh, it's 8.59, you might want to know is, if we look at CDS env uh, ls, right? If we do that, we get a million things. If we look at um, rep home, we can see where is the CDSK, CDSDK installed? There it is. So we could say, for example, um, uh, I, don't, I have no idea, right? I have no idea. What, wait a minute, let's see. My bookshop books, Jane Eyre. So if we do a grep um, recursive, uh, look for Jane, I have no idea if this is gonna work, error. Uh, where do we do, wanna do that? We want to do that where, uh, where CDSN, uh, ls uh, n get uh, home uh, cds dk will that work oh hold on uh, oh there we go get rid of that one there there we go look at that there, that's where it is to answer your question specifically uh, who was that uh, to ask it to Rohan there look in the CDS DK that's installed globally. That's why it's in user, local, share, NPM, global, lib, node, module, blah, 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 blah. Template, sample, files, DB, data, sap, cap, I, bookshops, book, CSV. That's where it is. In fact, let's just do that a little bit shorter to just say, just show me the file names rather than the contents. They're in there. They're in, that's where it is. Okay. So you can always find things out. Anyway, it's 901. We haven't done half of what I wanted to do, but let me know if that's helpful. Let me know if I went too deep. Um, here we go. Oh, let's, let's make sure we um, answer all the questions. <gasps> PNPM is like a space saving superhero for projects. Need, oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. Uh, so AP says no addition to add CDSDK. Ah, okay. Yeah, so AP, so so kind of you, so kind of globally added, but no dev dependency. Exactly. It's not a dev, de it's not really a dev dependency because it's already installed locally because you sort of like need SAP CDSDK to bootstrap that package JSON. You know, without SAP CDSDK, we can't do a CDS in it and therefore we can't create that package JSON. It's a bit of like, a, you know, a chicken and egg situation, if that makes sense. Okay, uh, let's stop here because people got meetings and everything. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks for a brilliant chat. We'll carry on with this next week. We'll deep dive in a bit more to CDS Add and then CDS Watch, which is just amazing. So see you soon. Thanks for everything and see you. Oh no, next week is I'm doing a code jam. So it'll be the week after. Oh my goodness. Bye for now.